Hello, everybody. It's been a while since I've done an uncut gameplay video. I've been getting a ton of questions on when the next one is coming, so figured it'd be right now. Also, I haven't played a single run since the new update. I've been a little busy with uh, some Elden Ring action. So I wanted to try out Artificer here with her uh, new fire damage buffs. Um, I don't have a specific goal for this run. Also, great, we got the new stage. That's what I wanted to do. I just want to kind of talk about the game. Um, I haven't made one of these videos in a very long time, as I said. So there's been quite a few changes to the game. Uh, and then obviously the DLC came out, so I think it'd be cool to kind of just get my unfiltered thoughts on the gameplay without, uh, you know, my stream distracting me because I usually upload stream highlights or whatnot. Anyway, that being said, um, like I said, this is my first game uh, after the patch. I know it's been a while at this point. It's been like four days or something. Blind pest. Oh, these guys are still atrocious. Uh... So I wanted to test out the burn damage. I mistakenly said in my, uh, I think it was my tier list video, my item tier list, that burn damage now uh, keeps refreshing like bleed does per stack. That's not the case. I don't know why I said that. I was under the impression that it did. I just totally pulled it out of my butt. So uh, that is not correct. However, burn damage was changed uh, for the application. So now the burn is based on the hits value. It does total damage. It still doesn't have proc coefficient, so you're not going to, you know, Activate things like your your bleeds or your ATGs or your ice band, fire band, etc. Like those aren't going to happen from your burns. Uh, so don't don't think total damage equals being able to proc things. It just means that the value of the hit that uh, burns something now determines the damage of the burn. Which is kind of cool. I think it's fifty percent, fifty percent over um, four seconds. I want to say that's the duration. It's something like that. Uh, so that should be a uh, pretty significant change, honestly, especially if we manage to pull out a... I feel like that that freeze did not last very long at all on that guy. Uh, I feel like it's going to be very good, especially if we pull out a, an ignition tank, the new green item, which gives us 300% more burn damage. It's kind of crazy. All right, speaking of kind of crazy, we have two, count them, two avoid cradles. That's kind of nuts. Let's see what we pull out here. Also, let's see how many of the uh, little dudes we get. Can I just do that? We can. Oh, boom. Tenth of bobble. You know what? what? Might as well. <laughs> the marginally better chrono bobble. Could be worse. Not really. <laughs> Honestly, the void items are pretty dang good. Um, Tent the bobble is definitely one of the worst. Uh, the, not as good ones. It's not like necessarily bad because it still functions as a consistent death mark proc. Um, I probably shouldn't have done that when I have freaking less, almost less than half HP. All right, and here's the polar opposite. This is gonna be an interesting run. Unless I doubt a blind pest here. Uh, poly loot is the best, or uh, one of. Uh, there, there are a lot of good void items, but poly loot is insane. I said in my tier list that. Um, hold on, let's check this real quick. All right, so they changed the rest of key back. Actually, I'm gonna take this real quick. I should get my HP back for the TP. Um, what was I saying? What was I saying? What was I saying? Ah, shoot! I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have gone into this uh, it's completely cold. Should have warmed up with a run or something. Oh man, I'm sorry. I totally forgot what I was just saying. It happens to me all the time on stream. I didn't think it would happen this quickly. Uh, <laughs> on a local recording, but there we go. Anyway, if I think of it, I'll, I'll come back to it. I wish I could just like rewind my my recording here. Anyway, uh, void items are crazy strong. Most of them. Uh, poly loot is no exception. Oh, I was gonna say. Uh, there we go. See, totally just come back. Um, I was gonna say that losing out on the AOE. I thought it was gonna be a big deal. It's really not. By the AOE, I mean the uh, the ukulele. You know, you have your your usual proc chain shenanigans with the ukulele. Um, I thought it would be way worse than it actually is losing out on that stuff with the poly loot because the, if you didn't know the poly loot is ukulele but single target damage instead of AOE so instead of the lightning chaining back and forth it just hits the same target repeatedly um, it's very 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 powerful now on artificer it probably isn't like super busted because you need uh, quite a, a good proc rate to make full use of the poly loot um, but it still should be very strong, especially if I get some, uh, maybe like an alien head or something. I don't know. Just some decent cooldowns. Maybe a couple backup mags. Make some full use of that. I think it's what, it doesn't tell me. I think it's 60% total damage. I want to say the poly loot is 60% damage over a, a few hits there. All right. And here's, uh, the basics of risk rain. Now we've killed the teleporter boss. So we just sit here and AFK until the teleporter's done charging. Uh, this really doesn't change until you start getting into eclipse difficulty. With eclipse difficulty, you are, uh... Uh, at much more of a, a risk <laughs> if you just sit there in the teleporter like the actual process of charging it is still a pretty big threat most of the time uh, partially because the teleporter radius is significantly smaller uh, the radius is had I don't know why I'm talking about eclipse I mean I'm just trying to you know fill time here there's not much else to talk about I'm gonna go get some items over here and that's it uh, if you didn't know eclipse difficulty is just monsoon but harder uh, with stackable uh, debuffs to your character essentially uh, the more you play also I'll probably buy this why not 
150 gold, that's perfect. I don't have the logbook yet. Uh, anyway, Eclipse is just harder. That's all I'm trying to say. The teleported radius is reduced by half, but that actually equates to... Uh, let's try and get the fungus out of there. Oh, well. Uh, let's check out the fireworks as well. Holy crap, I, can I finish the sentence on the freaking... <laughs> Some people are like, What are you saying? Finish your sentence, streamer. Or YouTuber. Because I'm not streaming right now. Um, anyway, I was trying to say that because the teleporter is a sphere... Or a, a, a semicircle, I guess, or a half sphere. I don't know if there's a term for that. It probably is. Um, you're actually reducing the overall area to work with by like, I think it's like 70% or something. It's crazy. Like the, the overall stuff that you have to work with, the teleporter is so much uh, smaller in Eclipse difficulty. But as I said, and I don't know why I'm talking about Eclipse. It doesn't matter. We're out of here at about five and a half minutes. That's pretty good. Um, I haven't been paying attention to my time too much, especially with the newer stages. I'm just trying to learn them, get all the loot spawns. There's probably like, Another chest right there. That's fine. Um, I shouldn't have gone for that logbook, honestly. 150 gold, obviously, is a, a lot of money on the first stage. That's two, three large chests worth of money. I just wanted to get the logbook real quick. It's not going to hamper my overall run too much, uh, or at least it shouldn't. All right, we got abandoned aqueducts. Let's go ahead and try and find the... Uh, whatchamacallit? Sorry, my nose is running a little bit. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, try and find the buttons so we can activate the door, open the door, and get our double bands. Can you freeze? Oh, you can freeze these guys. Let's go. Also, I think I remember reading in the patch notes that the void infestors, those little uh, those little critters that pop out of the void cradle, they now degen HP over time uh, by running around. I'm sorry. My nose is like actually running. Hopefully, that's the last time I touch my nose, um, which is actually very good because those things are, they get ridiculous. Um, I want to say that their total health re uh, degenerates over 60 seconds, if I remember reading that. Uh, which is very good. Uh, maybe it's even less. Maybe it's like 30 seconds. But these things uh, were super tanky when the DLC first dropped. Uh, I'm assuming they're still pretty tanky. Also, oh my gosh, that is so much easier to see inside of. Holy moly. Uh, that is a very welcome change. Uh, seeing inside of the zone here, like before, it would be like totally black from uh, the outside. Like kind of like that, but uh, I don't know, actually. Maybe, maybe they didn't change that. I'm not quite sure, actually. This is definitely the same, but when you walk out of it... I think I think that's easier to see for sure. For sure. All right, three monsters remaining. Uh, and you do get little indicators on them, thankfully. That is very nice. I'm just going to go in here. It's actually very dangerous to do this, um, especially if you don't have any mobility. I missed my first couple shots there. All right, Void Infester. I think we got it. Are we good? One monster remaining. It's that guy right there. Boom, easy clap. I did not mean to uh, just toss that. That's fine. Boom, boom, boom. Where'd he going? Where's he going? Oh, he's running. Oh, that little rascal. Let's try and go in there, because if I kill him, it'll just collapse the seed. Oh, 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 he's over here. Oh, no. I'm just going to lose a lot of HP here. So the first hit, when a void enemy uh, becomes corrupted, they will block the first hit guaranteed, because they get safer spaces, which is a, a guaranteed block. You didn't know it's the void item. Dude, can I... Uh, there we go, finally. Probably shouldn't have jumped up that rock there. I could have uh, been hit by that lesser wisp I had, if I had just waited for a second or two. All right, um, I have no healing, so I'm going to hold off on the Void Cradles for now. I am going to pop the little... What are these called? Can I ping them? The stocks. They're called stocks. There we go. These give you a little bit of money and XP. They're like a barrel. It, actually, it's better than a barrel, I'm pretty sure. Um, I'll get this one. I have plenty of HP now. <gasps> what do we get? A uh, red whip. Actually, I will take a red whip. Because that will help my early game quite substantially. Just getting around the different uh, the chests and such. Also, uh, if you did not know, the Void Damage, and one of the reasons why the DLC uh, might feel a bit harder to some people... The void damage that you take if you're in the void fields or if you're playing the simulacrum game mode and you're outside of the safe zone or if you're in that the void seed like I just uh, showed you and I was taking damage that is not mitigated by anything so repulsion armors um oddly shaped opals jade elephants you cannot reduce that damage under any circumstances uh and I don't think no you can't even block it so your teddy bears your safer spaces not those won't even work all right uh I'll take the crit actually that's pretty good for the boss maybe chunk it down here also, I didn't check for the pot right here. That'd be a wise idea here. Well, let's go and find out. So it can get pretty nutty. Speaking of difficulty, that was one of the first things I was uh, I wanted to touch on. I totally forgot about it. A lot of people have been asking if the game has gotten harder, uh, specifically with the DLC, but uh, a little bit before that as well. Like some people were returning. Be like, hey, I haven't played since like, I don't know, Artifacts 2.0 or the 1.0 update. Has the game gotten harder since? Um, I, yes and no is the answer to that one. I know it's kind of a kind of a cop out, not a real answer. Go ahead and pop this real quick. Uh, so if you, like, don't play a ton of Risk Rain 2, like, you've maybe played, I don't know, I, I, it's an arbitrary amount, but let's just put, a like, 40 hours. If you played 40 hours of Risk Rain 2, 
uh, and let's say all of that was 1.0, and then you took a break, you didn't you didn't play Anniversary Update, and you're coming back with the DLC, yeah, absolutely, the game is harder. Absolutely. Um, and on top of that, if you still play, if you play quite a bit of Risk Rain 2, but you're not, like, super comfortable with all the items and such, like, you don't take the game super seriously, you just have fun, you know, you get on with your friends, you just ha have a giggle with the boys, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, also, yes, I think the game has gotten harder for you players, because... Uh, there's a lot more to soak in and if you're not already comfortable with the existing items the DLC adding 40 more items on top of that that you now have to learn and then understand all the synergies between and blah 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 Yeah, I think I think uh, And on top of that the enemies are just crazy blind pest and the larva and all those things you have to get adjusted to all these new enemies, etc Yeah, for sure. It's uh, a bit harder, but for you guys that play the game quite a bit and for myself I actually find it uh, not substantially easier, but noticeably noticeably easier for sure um you have a lot more power uh that's huge we've got a pot and then a button right here pog um you have a lot more control over the power that you get it's like when the scrapper came out you know that was such a big game changer being able to actually control uh your loot just to you know not a command artifact degree obviously but you know having that at least little little tiny bit of control makes the world of a difference to an experienced player um so the short answer is yes and no. It's gotten harder for players that don't have a ton of experience or even like medium experience probably. I, I don't know. I, I Obviously, I can't speak for you guys because I have quite a bit of experience with the game. Um, I was hoping the other button would be over there or we get one more chest over here. So that's my answer. Uh, yes and no. It's, it's gotten harder, but it's also not, if that makes sense. Uh, it's definitely not... Uh, too difficult to learn so don't get discouraged if you're hearing that and you're still on the fence whether or not you're getting the want to pick up the dlc or something it's definitely not like impossible to learn as a new player for sure this might roll off let's see what happens here i don't know how well artificer can do the uh the, the kickflip trick here can she even do it oh my gosh what am i doing all right here we go let's see if i take like no i don't think she can do it because she's floats unlucky she might be able to and i'm just trolling um so we just put this up here. The bane of my existence right here. <laughs> I I'm very well might pause the uh, recording here. Or just, you know, cut ahead in editing. Uh, this is going to be an uncut run, don't worry. But, I mean, I'm just rolling pots on the buttons here. I guess you'll see if I uh, jump forward and the timer goes up substantially. Then you'll know. I should get this in one second, though. Once I get this on here, I can just go to the other one. We're good to go. Come on! There we go. This also is a good learning experience for some people, I'm sure. Some people probably you don't even know that you can do this hopefully you do it a little better than i do though holy crap dude go go come on it's right there it's right there there it is come on come on and and oh it's true dude every time every time it gets right there and then it moves like that all right i think i should be good nope nope see it gets right there and then it moves come on come on oh if i rolled it all the way okay i'll take it i'll take it uh, so we know it's not here. We know it's not... Actually, did I check here? I might not have. Uh, I did. Okay, so it's not there. It's not there. Um, I don't know if I checked Big Rock. I know I checked that spot in the tree. So it's either right here or over by the Big Rock. Hopefully it's right here. We shall find out. I know I'm not being very descriptive here. Also, uh, one thing to talk about. You get a lot more money. Um, I can't verify that completely, but from my experience and from talking to other uh, Risk Rain players as well, you get a lot more money now. Um, I don't know what the heck. What, what you, I've never seen four spawn. That's insane. Weeping Fungus is also crazy to get. Holy moly. I just got four Void Infestors there. I'm going to see how much their HP degens. I'm not going to kill them. Hopefully my healing drone doesn't get uh, infected. Actually, can my healing drone even hit me if it gets infected? I don't know if it can. Because I think it, it, when a Void Infester uh, infests something. Uh, is it at the tree? I thought I checked the tree. I always do this, man. I always just totally forget one button spawn. It's not that one. Wait, hold up. It's not even here. Wait a second. Okay, I... It might have been in... Oh, no, it's this one. I forgot about this. I always forget about one button spawn, dude. Always. Take this. Let's not skip a large chest either. What am I doing? This is a uh, <laughs> kind of all over the place run here. I'm not playing super efficiently, but that's okay. Uh, oh, the best item in the game, baby. That's the thing. Once you play more and more Risk of Rain 2, you don't need to play hyper efficiently to get good runs. Um, an experienced player will understand, you know, the nuance 
of every run and uh, understand how it changes. Obviously, the context of a given run. So I'm not too worried here. I'm, I'm wasting a bit of time here, but it's not going to be the end of the world. Um, what was I saying? Oh, about the Void Infestors. I think, like I said, it's like 60, 60 seconds, rather. They have a full HP bar to zero. Um, it might be 30 seconds. I don't know the exact number, but just thankfully their HP goes down simply as they scurry around, which is very good. All right. Come here, Kiaro and Renald. I'm about to show you the true definition of power. Of power. Also, the fact that uh, burn damage scales with total damage means that your crits actually do matter now for burns, which is kind of cool. It's essentially burns are the overloading orbs, but over time. Because the the overloading elite affix, the, uh, the lightning guys, when, when they hit you and they get the little orb that explodes after a short duration, that does 50% total damage. So a burn is just 50% total damage, but over four seconds, like I said. Um, I don't know if it's four or three, it doesn't really matter. Just over time. It's an overloading orb, but over time. That's the, the best way to think about it. Also, I didn't really mention uh, Lysate Cell. Lysate Cell is pretty darn good. Um, I really wanted to, like I said, test the burn as much as I can. So getting another charge of my special, my flamethrower, is pretty powerful. And it reduces the cooldown by 33%, I believe, for the first stack. It's only the first stack. Kind of nuts if it just kept stacking. Um, the one thing I wish you could do, and you just saw it right there, sprinting with flamethrower active. Why that's not a thing? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Like... Would that break Artificer completely if she could just sprint while using Flamethrower? I don't think so. I really don't think so. There has to be a reason why they haven't uh, adjusted that whatsoever. But come on, like, it would add so much to her kit. Being able to simply sprint while using Flamethrower. But hey, it's not the end of the world. It would just be a nice little buff. Look, I'm not doing a ton of damage at all right there. Three damage per tick. I mean, it makes sense because it's, you know, over the four seconds, like I said. All right, score stakers, everybody's favorite stage. I'm sure there are some of you that actually do uh, enjoy score stakers. It's your favorite stage three. Why? I don't know. I do not know. You're crazy to me. But I'm not faulting you for it. Uh, the reason why I don't really like this stage is because it's just too hard to find all the loot. And by too hard, I mean it's just there's too many things in the way. Right, I know where all the loot is supposed to be, right? I can I can scout the stage or uh, move around the stage pretty easily. It's just seeing all the loot and efficiently like planning your in your in your brain, like planning your path is very difficult on this stage. Also, sometimes uh, I still struggle with finding the teleporter on this stage. It, the the color palette of the skybox, if you're looking like at a, a slight upwards angle, it's kind of hard to see the teleporter sometimes. The little uh, red dots will blend in very easily. But there it is. We're fine. We're all good. I don't think there's anything else I wanted to touch on specifically. It was mainly just the uh, the difficulty of the game, whether or not it's actually gotten harder or not. I assume it's damage to pump out with this. They buffed Flamethrower also. Uh, Flamethrower used to be 1,700% damage over the duration, and I believe now it's 2,000. Uh, someone correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was 1,700. So not a huge buff, but, you know, a buff. Better than nothing buff. Is that really what Flamethrower needed, in my opinion? No. No. Like I said, sprinting with it would be a world of a difference. Having re Retaining that level of mobility. Uh, that, that's Artificer's biggest problem. If you don't take uh, Ion Surge, which I actually do recommend you take Ion Surge. I'm testing out Flamethrower now, but... Ion Surge is pretty darn good, dude. Being able to just instantly get out of a situation, just float above the enemies, and... If you know what you're doing... Now, I don't like that gameplay style, personally. Where you, that's why I don't like head stompers either. Just the feeling that you get when you pick up a head stompers and you're just too floaty. You stay in the air too long. I like being quick and snappy. So it's just a, a, a gameplay preference at that point. But the if you don't understand how to adjust your mobility in the air, uh, which is essentially it comes down. I don't have ion search, so I can't really show you too well. But if you're floating and you can like you drop down real quick and then you reposition. That was a terrible example, but that's essentially what you do. And you can quickly uh, reposition. Let's take another Wungus here. Uh, bustling fungus is actually very strong if you have a wungus because the weeping fungus is extremely strong the bungus itself the bustling fungus i probably shouldn't use uh, <laughs> too many nicknames here sorry for you newer players uh weeping fungus is insanely powerful two percent healing per second while sprinting pretty darn amazing because what are most survivors doing sprinting around 
Uh, I would say it is still good, but not as good on... Like, it's still a no-brainer pickup. Like, you don't want Bungus on anybody. We Weeping Fungus is straight up better on everybody. Yes, even the Engineer. I would recommend it even on Engineer. I don't think the Bungus playstyle is 100% necessary on the Engineer whatsoever. In fact, I prefer Mobile Turrets, which you can't even do Bustling Fungus on. Anyway. Um, like, Commando and Multi. That was my original point. Because what are you doing on Commando and Multi? You're pretty much just, you know, AFK attacking something. You can't necessarily sprint while you do it. You can, you can like kind of tap sprint, but it doesn't, I should have floated way earlier, that was a mistake. I have to waste my time coming over here. But you have to like keep tapping it and you're not sprinting all the time and you're not attacking all the time. It's just more efficient to AFK attack something and then uh, go into uh, like sprinting for a few seconds. But on all other survivors, you are sprinting the vast majority of time. So getting 2% of your health per second per stack, crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. All right, we're gonna save our ocular here. Boom, let's pop that. Big damage. All right, show me the damage of the burns here. That's not bad, actually. Not bad whatsoever. Uh, didn't get hit there, that's good. All right, he is dead. Nice, oh, I will take that. Uh, we did get a blue, oops, I thought he was dead. We did get a blue portal. Uh, nice, a little bit of healing as well. I will right, we'll take that. I'll go in the blue portal, but I probably won't buy anything. As you can see, my... Uh, <laughs> My coin stockpile isn't particularly amazing right now. Um, I'll probably go... I don't know if I want to do a loop or not. I'll probably just go to Mythrix on stage 5. I don't know if I want to show the Voidling. Uh, going to Voidling uh, before the second loop of a run is pretty much a death sentence. Uh, if you go to stage 6 Voidling, you need... Like, need damage, mobility, and healing. If you don't have all three of those, which is... You know, it's like every layer in the game. You know, de healing or defense kind of interchangeable. But if you don't, you need them for the Void Link. Or else you're going to spend like legit 30, 40 minutes just AFK behind a wall. Uh, and it's just it's just not fun. It's just not fun. You can get it done, but it's just better. Just go kill Mythrix, honestly. Go kill Mythrix. Um, that is one thing. I, I enjoy the Mythrix fight substantially more than I do the Void Link fight. Um... Like I said, you're just, stand, you're just standing behind walls. That's all you're doing. You're, you're wiggle peeking the final boss. It's a cool boss, don't get me wrong. Like, the scale of the boss, it's uh, it, it's it's about the same as Mythrix. The whole, like, epic battle that's about to take place. The scale of it. But the actual fight itself, not very uh, interactive, I'll say. All right, we got one of the new Lunars here. This one right here. This is the Light Flux Pauldron. Reduces your attack speed by half. It's a multiplicative bonus, so it straight up halves your attack speed, but it halves your cooldowns as well. So this might be pretty good for me. However, uh, attack speed matters a lot because the animation speed of actually casting an ability is dictated by your attack speed. So by picking this up, if you don't have any attack speed, you are going to take eons to cast your abilities. Despite them having half as much uh, cooldown, you're casting them more frequently overall, maybe, but the, the amount of time it'll actually take to cast them is substantially increased. So I don't know if I'll take that. Uh, Course Loom might actually be kind of good for me. Because uh, I don't really have that uh, instant like heal up kind of potential. I'm actually going to take the Corpse Loom. Why not? I haven't taken a blue portal in actually a long time. Or rather, I haven't uh, utilized the lunar items. I've been kind of straying away from them. Not, not in any particular, or not for any particular reason. Just because I like playing the game without them sometimes. I don't know. Like, Corpse Limb seems like a pretty good choice here. Uh, if you don't know, the Corpse Limb just causes your healing to apply to you over time. Uh, all of your sources of healing. So instead of it just being just like that, like a Harvester Scythe healing for 8 HP, it'll apply it to you over a, a small duration. I, I don't remember the exact math. That's kind of a convoluted item anyway. Just heals, heals you over time. That's all you have to think about. I don't know if I want to take this or not. Uh, like I said, the animation speed is going to be drastically slower. In fact, we can test that right now. All right, let's see how long it takes for me to cast a Flamethrower. Half a second, maybe. All right. I'm just going to full send, dude. Let's go. Uh, there we go. So, you saw substantially longer. However, it will come up much faster. And once I get some attack speed going, it probably won't feel too bad. Well, let's give it a shot. And I can still insta-cast Ice Wall, which is very powerful. Um, I'm assuming, yeah, the charge time on this bad boy is going to take forever. And then it finally comes out. Woo! All right, those still come out. That's pretty good. So the, the auto attack there, that looks like it'll be pretty good. Abyssal Depths, thank the Lord. Um, 
Like, it still comes out pretty much instantly. It's just, uh... Now I don't really have to worry about it being on cooldown ever. I'll take that. Also, that was quite a bit of damage. I didn't even charge that thing up. I just tapped it like I usually would. Or charged it up for a brief second like I usually would. And it basically one-shot him. Actually, it literally one-shot him. Holy d <laughs> It took forever to cast that. Oh, I might have made a mistake here, actually. Uh, oof, this is going to be rough for the TP. Look at that. Like, I'm still doing the same amount of damage. It's just taking so long for it to come out now. Ooh, that might have messed up my flamethrower capabilities. Like I said, once we get some attack speed, it'll be much better. Much, much better. Where is the little uh, worm? There he is. Can't really hit him. I think... Did he die off of that? Wow, okay. Would have thought he'd be more tanky. We have an Eldermarian above us. Just give it a second. Charge this bad boy up. Boom. Uh, oh, I popped the ocular after. So if you queue up uh, a channeled ability, uh, and then you pop the ocular HUD, the full crit chance thing, afterwards, you're not actually going to get the crit bonus. Uh, you have to pop the ocular, then pop the uh, ability. So even though I hadn't started casting the flamethrower yet, because I had activated it before the ocular, I didn't get the crit, as you saw. If you notice that. Not a big deal. All right, we have another Void Seed, which is actually kind of lucky. I don't think they adjust the spawn rates at all. I don't remember seeing that in the patch notes. That was a terrible shot. So getting a second Void Seed uh, on the first loop. Getting one at all is pretty rare, but getting two on the first loop is pretty darn good, dude. I will take that. Do I have a Combat Shrine anywhere? Probably don't need one, but just checking. All right, so attack speed, attack speed, attack speed. That is my goal right now. Just a little bit of attack speed. Also, four oddly shaped opals is very powerful. So oddly shaped opal is one of the new DLC items. It gives you 100 armor per stack, but only while you're outside of combat and only for the first hit. Uh, well, I mean, that's what the outside of combat part means. Uh, so as soon as you take damage, you lose its bonus. However, 100 armor is a lot of armor. The first stack of this item gives you a 50% damage reduction. Um, and then, for reference, the Jade Elephant gives you 500 armor, which is an 83% damage reduction. So, 5 Opals is 83% damage reduction. Just crazy. Absolutely crazy powerful. So, 4 Opals is probably around, like, I don't know, high 60s, low 70s. I had to guess. Something like that. What are you... What's that guy doing right there? Hey, yo, what the Void Beaver be doing? That's kind of weird. Oh, I thought my Flamethrower was still up. I'm trolling. Yeah, I don't know if Life Flux Pauldron was uh, the correct choice right now. We'll have to find out. Uh, let's go in here. We have a couple... Oh, there's some void enemies over here. I love how it tells you where they are now. That yeah, I did, did not used to do that, 100%. Also, I remember seeing the lockbox. I just didn't pick it up. Also, that thing instantly died. They might have nerfed that. They might have nerfed the uh, overall HP. Also, Sticky Bomb Printer. I have to pay my respects. It is mandated. Sticky bombs, thank you forever and always. Never, ever, ever forget your sacrifice. Um, I actually received a comment. I forgot to reply to you as well. I'm sorry. Um, not too long ago on YouTube, someone asked, why do you pay your respects to the sticky bomb printer? Because it used to be the literal best item in the game. If you found a sticky bomb printer, you just won the run. Straight up. Even if you found it on stage one, only getting like four or five sticky bombs, that was enough to just absolutely carry your run. So they used to scale in both proc chance and damage per stack. So you could get a 100% chance to proc a sticky bomb. And then each bomb at that point was already dealing like 2,000 plus percent damage. So every single hit gave you an extra 2,000 percent damage. Uh, and then you could just keep printing them too for even more damage. So <laughs> they were pretty nuts. But that, that was uh, the first, very first patch of the game, if I remember correctly. They, uh, they nerfed sticky bombs. I don't know if it was like quite the first patch, but it was at least the first like major patch. Um, I remember also monsters used to stop, straight up stop spawning. You, you couldn't uh, loop your run past like two loops. And there was no final boss back then, so the only thing you could do in this game was loop. Um, and then they fixed that. That was the first major patch. I do remember that one for sure. Uh, also, that guy was significantly tankier. Uh, is my corpse room really helping me right now? I would say it is. Just making the Wungus even more Wungusy. Also, I have 5,000 gold. Remember when I said uh, I think you get more money now? Yeah, no joke. Not a joke. I'm getting uh, way more money. All right, take out this glacial just before we go into the teleporter. And we'll get her done. What do we get here? Uh, another one gets sure. Why not? Uh, gasoline probably would have been okay. Uh, not really. Not, not really. We don't need the AOE at this point. We got a two-second cooldown ice spear, basically, if I need some AOE. 
plus the ice wall. Could have taken the legendary chest first. Might have needed it for this fight. We'll find out. I should not have hit that guy. I should have waited uh, until they both lined up for my ice and fire bands to uh, double pierce them. But that's okay. Now, look at what you're uh, witnessing right now. Imagine if I could sprint while doing this. Get all my uh, healing up with my my Wungus, my Weeping Fungus. Oh, it'd be amazing. 311 damage. Is that what that said for my spear? I like, hardly charged it up again. I just kind of tossed it out. Not bad. Not bad. All right, that's a huge TP. They're both going to be on top of one another. For the Fire Band and the Ice Band to go to town. I'm kind of liking uh, Ice Flux or uh, Light Flux Pauldron. Excuse me. Not going to lie. All right, we took a heavy hit there, but Healing Drone plus Wungus plus Corpse Bloom will be fine. How many times have I said Wungus in this video so far? Comment below. All right, we took damage again. That's why, that is exactly why you don't want to use Flamethrower. <laughs> I just, I literally just stopped for, I don't even know, half a second to wait for the Flamethrower to come up. Instantly got bonked by a Brass Contraption. That is like the exact reason why being able to sprint with it would be a game changer. And again, would that, would that break Artificer? Truly, would that, would that totally mess up the Artificer? Make her super busted? No, no, of course not. Of course not. All right, as you can see, I'm kind of just face tanking everything. That's because uh, we have so much healing built in right now. So much consistent healing. I'm not worried about getting one shot by anything. I don't see an Elder Demurian. Imp Overlords never one shot you. You have to like make multiple mistakes for them to kill you. Uh, hopefully we get a Shatter Splane, actually. That'd be, that'd be pretty good. I haven't received a Shatter yet. Oh, Ignition Tank, though. There we go. I wanted to get that. Yeah, that's pretty good. So Ignition Tank, Ignition Tanks give you 300% uh, damage. Plus 300% damage. So quadruple damage for the first stack which is quite potent. I don't think I have to uh, explain that. <laughs> Remember when I said I might want to get an alien head? All right, I guess we're going full cooldown artificer build here. My ice spear is now a two second cooldown. That's actually kind of nuts. The fact that I only have two items, uh, one alien head, one light flux pauldron, which you can get light flux on a consistent basis. Alien head, yeah, you're not gonna get that uh, every run, not even close, but you can easily target farm a light flux pauldron if you really want to. That's not bad. This feels kind of good, actually. Uh, the door's closed. So, sorry, I just spilled water all over myself like a toddler. Um, so if that door is closed, you obviously lose access to that area. No, lo no loot will spawn there. But if the door is open, not only will you uh, uh, just have more loot. Sorry, it, you will have more loot. So it doesn't just spread the loot out into now that new area. It straight up gives you more loot on the stage. Um, and how the stages work, if you didn't know, I'll briefly go over the directors. So the directors are responsible for spawning the monsters, spawning the interactables. That's why you go on a stage, your teleporter's in a different spot each time. The chests are in a different spot each time, right? You generally know, like, where to look, but the actual exact locations are different. That's because the directors just, you know, they control where everything's going. Um, and they have a credit system, and everything costs a certain amount of credits. Uh, that's why sometimes you, you will see, instead of... Uh, like a good amount of large chests, you'll see like a Shrine of Order on Rally Point Delta. Shrine of Order is very expensive for the director to spawn. That's also why it's very rare. Um, so, on Abyssal Depths, when that door, when the back area, the big uh, like U-shaped hallway back there, if that is open, you get more credits. The director gets more credits, so you just get straight up more loot. Uh, that time we didn't have the door open, but it's not a big deal. All right, Sky Meadow, 30 minutes. I will take that. Uh, honestly, I think Sky Meadow got easier. I'm not going to lie. Like, when Sky Meadow first came out, you were getting... I think you're still getting all the same enemies here, but they just added the Zai Construct and the... Uh, is that it, actually? Is that the only new enemy on Sky Meadow? I don't know. It just feels like it's easier. I don't know. Uh, it just... It used to be like, oh gosh, here we go. Sky Meadow It's about to get freaking gangbuster over here, but now it's just kind of like, eh. Sky Meadow. Just, just another stage. I don't know. Do you guys feel that way as well? Oh, and Gup. There we go. I was about to say Gup. Like, Gup is <laughs> not very dangerous. Uh, he can be very dangerous if you don't have a lot of movement speed, especially. But for the most part, I mean, Gup is Gup. All right, Gup is just kind of... He's just kind of chilling. Look at him. <laughs> Literally, because he, uh, he was in the ice there. Did you see that? See what I did there? Especially when they split. When Gup splits, uh, was it Geep or Gup? Yeah, it's Geep and then Gip. Gup, Geep, and Gip. Those are the, the three different forms. They're not very scary. And the parents, the parents got uh, Omega nerfed. I think it was at the anniversary update. I don't think it was 1.0. Yeah, this, wait, the stage came out at 1.0. No, it didn't. The stage came out in artifacts. 
Anyway, I'm just all over the place. I'm trying to say it feels like this stage got easier. Curious to know your thoughts. <laughs> Leave a like or dislike on the video and a comment below. Bye-bye. My wife is leaving to go shopping. It just kind of feels like that. Also, another buff. Sorry, I totally forgot to mention this. I'm sure some of you guys already commented this. Uh, when I was talking about Flamethrower getting buffed, they also changed it so it scales with attack speed. Um, so it's... And the... Uh, what's called? The Void Fiend, his primary attack, which is... Uh, actually, I think it's the same exact damage percent. It's 2,000% damage over the duration. Or it's per second, actually. So it's never, it's not the same damage because the Artificer's Flamethrower is over the entire duration, 2,000%. Void Fiend is 2,000 per second. Uh, anyway, both of those scale with attack speed now, which is very, very nice. Also, look at that. I have 6,000 gold, and I haven't even hit a combat shrine. I swear you're getting more money nowadays. I don't know. It might just be Gup. Gup gives you a ton of money. Like, a lot of money. Gup is kind of cracked out of his mind. I don't know. Also, I probably should have turned up the game audio. Um, I have it this low for my stream. It's not, like, super low. I'm sure you can hear what you need to hear. Uh, also, my headset. Yeah, my headset's a little low, but that's okay. My apologies. At this point, you probably already got used to it, so it's time to go. Um, also, if I'm going straight to Mythrix, I 100% should not have picked up a shipping request. Actually, never mind. You still get it. I was going to say I should have picked up the fuel cell because that's a, you know, the Lysate cell. The, uh, the one that gives me an extra special charge. However, I'm not really going to be using Flamethrower on Mythrix. And also, also, you do get the shipping request form on the final stage. Which is pretty awesome. Uh, if you didn't know, shipping request form, another one of the new items... Uh, it spawns a multi-shop for you. It's only a two-use multi-shop, so there's only two items to choose from. However, oh, that's bad. That's bad. Thank you, Corpse Lumen Wungus. Actually saving my life right there. Pop this guy as well, just for a little bit of distraction. We have plenty of money. It gives you uh, the choice of two items, and it's, it's like the old Rusted Key before uh, it got changed to consume on every use. Rusted Key used to be just permanently stackable like every other item. It wasn't consumed on use. Just gave you a, a, ooh, a higher chance to get a, a, a more rare item. A better, I want to say better item, but, you know, technically it's just more rare. You could get a, a left on Daisy instead of a, a pair of crit or delicate watch or something. Speaking of delicate watch, that would help uh, tremendously right now. All right, I guess I'm just, bye. Okay, dude, that's one of the downsides of uh, using your hover. I should have just used it to prevent fall damage and then just fallen straight down. I might have gotten TP back over there, but I guess I'll just uh, I'll just go loot over here. Not a big deal. That's what happens if you uh, take one of those geysers, or if you get knocked back. If you're if you're getting propelled in a certain direction, and you don't do anything to stop that momentum, even if you uh, stop your like your vertical momentum, but you're moving horizontally at the same speed, you'll just keep going that way until you change it. You hit a wall. You teleport it back in or something. Another poly loot's actually sick. Let's go. So that's what happened right there. I didn't I didn't want to go over here. But uh the game had other plans for me. So I guess I'm over here now. That's okay. We can go down here and find some loot. Some big boy loot. We got one chest. Let's go. Let's see what we get here. A little bit of mobility would be absolutely perfect. Ooh, death mark's actually huge. Um I don't know if I have enough to proc that. I have bleed, I have burn, I have tenta bobble, and I have ice band. I actually do. I do indeed have enough to proc that. It's just not gonna happen all the time because my chance to you know apply a bleed or apply a root is pretty low compared to my guaranteed uh, ice band and burn on a single target, I should say. Gasoline yeah, would change that. However, I don't really need to death mark multiple enemies. I just really need to death mark the tanky boys. All right, we have an ice band or a fire band. For a fire band, another ignition tank. Oof. Uh, I'm going to go for it. Why not? What's the worst that could happen? Now, I actually don't know the stacking effect of the ignition tank. It might be plus 300% per stack, which is kind of gross if it is. Like, that's going to be... Let's see, actually. How much damage you taking there, buddy? Not bad. Wait, hold up. Not bad at all. Oh, don't get frozen. Don't get frozen. That would have been really bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll take that. I mean, those aren't the tankiest of foes right there. The little turret guys. That's also another reason why this stage is pretty easy, in my opinion. I think the turrets are not a threat whatsoever. They're kind of just AFK most of the time anyway. They kind of just do their own thing. Yeah, dude, that's some good damage, actually. Holy moly. Ignition tank artificer. Also, I saw that chest up there. Let's go back for it. 
Here's the death mark. Like I said, we only need on the tanky boys anyway. Uh, let's not get hit there. Might, yep, let's say might get hit anyway. It's all good. We got the Wungus. We got the Corpse Bloom. We got some decent, more than decent healing. Also, this guy's almost dead. If the you start getting ground pounded by one of these eyeball guys, it means that they're low HP. They only do that when they hit like, I think it's like 15% or 20% HP. Uh, the Alloy Worship Unit, the secret boss on Siren's Call, that guy only does it at 50% HP. So he starts doing it much earlier and he gets a shield when he does it. I'm sure you guys already know this. I'm just, you know, finding things to talk about here while we just clear the stage out. I canceled my flamethrower because I thought I was going to be able to sprint with it. I guess. No sprint for me. Why am I trapped by this rock? Anyway, so it, it's indicative of you need to kill that enemy. When, yeah, see, look, he's just like ignoring me. That turret just straight up ignored me as I ran past him. Do I want to take a mountain shrine? Am I a baby? Of course not. We're definitely taking a mountain shrine. Uh, let's get these two chests right here. We can get... Eh, it's an equipment drone. I don't want to toss my crit to him, unfortunately. Bison steak. Let's go. Another excellent item. On par with the left on daisy. The best item in the game. Can't tell. I am completely joking. Hopefully you could tell that. Uh, it's not going to kill. I'm not even going to come close. All right. I get that one chest. I think I left it over here. Yes, I did. Oh. Never mind. I, I, I just was about to say, oh, we already had a mountain shrine. Then I remembered. That was the one that I pressed just now. All right. I did not mean to get hit right there. Let's see if it teleports me on the bridge. It should. Here we go. Probably take the Elder Marion out real quick. Uh, I wish that parent wasn't body blocking. I would have killed him. Dude, look at that damage from... That was one stack of burn. Like, actually, one stack. That's crazy. All right. I'm going to go to Mythos. Maybe we'll do the Void Fiend as well. The Void Link, sorry. Solo's Control Unit, my favorite boss on this stage. These guys are pretty much a pushover. Although I don't have a ton of mobility. All right, let's pop the crit here. Pop the flamethrower. Let's see what happens. How much damage we're pumping out here. Also, I kind of just realized that I cucked my, my flamethrower damage because having 50% reduced attack speed means that it's doing half as much damage. So this was definitely not a flamethrower type of run here. The the tick rate is determined by your attack speed, as I mentioned uh, a few minutes ago. So the light flux pauldron having my attack speed means that it literally is having the damage of the flamethrower. Not the best synergy. I was wondering, I was like, dude, why does he only have three stacks on him? Look at how, oh, I'm not using it. Whoops. About to say, look at how slow this attack speed is. I think it's doing 39 damage per ignite tick. That's kind of crazy. Considering it ticks uh, a lot. The whole duration is four seconds, and it looks like it ticks like four times a second as well. So 16 ticks of 30 damage for one ignite. That's not bad at all. Might even be, it's faster than that. Look at that. Look at how fast that thing's ticking. Oh, it has bleed on it too, actually. It might be the bleed. Um, I think it was a very good choice taking the Corpse Loom. Light Flux Pauldron, not so sure about that one. But Corpse Loom was an absolutely fantastic choice. I feel very, very safe right now. These guys are never going to, like, one-shot you unless you make a huge, mis huge mistake. Like, absolutely massive mistake here. Uh, let's try and kill these Wisps. Totally forgot I had a Poly Loot as well. Very, very good item. Honestly, I should just sit in my auto attack. That's what I should do. Screw the flamethrower. Literally no point in using it. Actually no point whatsoever. We'll just sit in the auto attack. Because I, I can actually just sit here and attack. Uh, you can see the cooldown of it. It's 0.5 seconds. Uh, alien head. Oh, that's going to kill me or not? Uh, yes, okay. I got hit by uh, an elite brass contraption right there. Be careful. That guy's almost dead. Probably just finish him off. Oh, I got bonked again, dude. Holy crap. Where did I even get bonked from? Oh, it's the elite guy again. Thought he was still on the other side. Should be dead. We're good. Hope poof at insane. Insane to get double hope poof for Mythrix fight. Like, that's going to make it so much easier. I was a little scared. The fact that I have a mocha for mobility here. There might be one more chest somewhere on the stage, but I really don't care about scouting the entire stage just for one chest. i got to be real with you. Let's get out of here. But getting two Hopu Feathers is going to make Mythrix a joke, especially with Ice Spear plus Ice Wall. He's not going anywhere. He's not going anywhere, especially because they are reduced cooldown. Uh, this should be a very easy fight. The only thing is I have to do the pillars because 
I have no way to get up to Mythrix. Um, skipping to Mythrix. You need Wax Quail with a little bit of mobility, with a Head Stomper. That would get you up there. Ion Surge obviously would get you up there. I shouldn't have taken Flamethrower. I just wanted to test out Ignite. I really wanted to test it. Uh, it's just, you, you can't sprint. That's the only thing. I promise that is the only... It's not... It sounds some copium right there, but I promise that's the only thing holding Flamethrower back. It won't be, like, the most busted ability in the game. And it might not even be better than Ion Surge still, but... It just feels so much better. Being able to just move around. Like, look at this speed. Like, am I am I too fast right now? Would being able to flamethrower or something with this speed be busted? No. No. No, it wouldn't. But it is what it is. Alright, we have one of each pillar, I think. Yeah, we have one of each pillar. Which is a, a good thing or a bad thing. That could have been all of the whatever ones knock you back are. It's my least favorite. Actually, no, these are my least favorite. The ones that... Slowly get smaller every time. I do not like those ones. Um, also, I should have looked for a scrapper. I don't remember if I had one. I would have gladly scrapped my shield gens, my lepton, uh, bandolier, fresh meat, sorry, bison steak. Um, kill the perfected guy here. It's not going to finish him off, but this will maybe. Definitely. Okay, okay, okay. Relax, relax, relax. I'm more scared of the perfected uh, flying chimera coming in. He should be, like, right on top of me now. Where is he? There he is. Uh, not bad damage. You got a poly loot proc off of that? All right, go around the corner. It might cast before I can get around the corner. It definitely did. We're just going to chill. Whoa, he's coming. Oh, Lord, he's coming. Dude, can you... What are you doing? He just big brained me. He sat in the corner knowing full well it wasn't going to be able to reach him in time. Also, is he not getting frozen? Can you not freeze perfected elites or just the flying guys? I thought you could freeze these guys. I could have sworn you uh, can freeze those guys. But uh, apparently not. It's all good, though. All right, it's going to take me a few minutes to clear out pillars here. Um, I might just pause this part because pillars are pretty much uneventful. Nah, I'll keep it on. Why not? I said there was going to be an uncut run. By gosh, this will be an uncut run. Uh, that could have been bad. We're good. Um, I thought I had a pillar over here. I guess there are two somewhere else that I wasn't paying attention to. Man, if Ignite permanently refresh, like burn, whoo, or sorry, like uh, bleed, sorry, I'm burning. That would have been nuts. Might be, sometimes I hide over here. I would have seen it, I think. Yeah, but it's not here. Oh, oh we have two blood shrine. Perfect. Ideally, having all blood is the uh, the best the best move. Well, it's not, it's not a move, it's just RNG. But having all blood is insane. You finish this stage extremely quickly. Very, very fast. Also, I apologize again if the uh, game audio is a little quiet. My voice is probably much louder. Uh, so I apologize if that's been frustrating to any of you. Should have turned it up a little bit. Might not even be a big issue, who knows? Who the heck knows? Alright, this guy's kind of scary. This is essentially what's going to happen to Mythrix as well. So look at this perfected guy. And then imagine he Mythrix. And that's pretty much what's going on. want to use Flamethrower, but I really don't. I really don't. Now, the Voidling, on the other hand. Not even going to go to him, honestly. I mean, I can't. I have eight coins. Unless I somehow get two Lunar Coins. Uh, <laughs> by the time we go to Mythrix. Highly unlikely, but I guess it's... Never say never. It's not. It's not gonna happen. Straight up, it's not gonna happen. Yo, nice daisy, bro. Huge, huge. Can't believe I got the daisy proc there. Insane. It's a decent. I want to see what my damage looks like to Mythrix. Like I have double ignition, one armor piercing, a little bit of crit. It's not the best damage in the world. I already popped it. Whoops. Whoopsies. All right, we got both blood pillars done already. I love the blood pillars. I heckin' love blood pillars. Okay, jump up over here. If I see a really good cauldron, I might yellow print. Probably not. I mean, my greens aren't, like, super good, actually. Might just do it. Might just full send. I don't need the scythe because we have the wungus. I don't need the predatory because it's just a little bit more attack speed. I mean, it'd be nice. I don't, do I actually have a red item? 
Holy. All right, I'm not going to ping it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get surprised. I think it's a random. Maybe not. I actually got a red from that. It is a random. Oh, we got a random red. That's, dude, shipping. I get so, it was off of one shipping request. I think that's a 1% chance. I think I legit had a 1% chance to get a red item on this stage. Holy crap. SMH streamer hacking as usual. Holy crap. Cherry picking the best runs for YouTube, dude. That's me. Hey, ooh. 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 Okay, if I had any worries about the Mythrix fight, they just went away. Oh, we have a deals as well. Okay, I don't need a deals. I'm a gamer. That's totally not going to bite me in the butt. I promise. I promise. Ignition tank printer. I would have printed that. Maybe I still will. I don't know. Hold up. What do we have for common items? Let's do a scout here. We have three shield gens. Don't need those. Three repulsions. Don't need them. It's Mythrix. We don't need repulsion on Mythrix. Um, opals would be pretty darn good, actually. Uh, so losing those would be bad. Goat hooves would be really bad to lose. Mocha would be... Eh. It'd be pretty, actually, it'd be just as bad as Goat Hoof, honestly, because the attack speed's pretty important. Um, crowbar, we could lose that, 100%. Rope, War Banner, I wish I had a Scrapper, man. Bleed, we don't even need the Bleed. Um, I don't think I can apply it to... Oh, yeah, I can technically Deathmark Mythrix, dude. What the heck? So if I lose the Bleed, I do technically lose out on my Deathmark proc on Mythrix, but honestly, it's not that big a deal. It really isn't that big a deal. Um, I forgot we still have one more pillar here. I wasn't even the last one. All right, dude. Ah. Iris right, is yellow one time. Okay, we lost two good items and uh, one bad item. One good item there. All right, that was, that was a better trade. All right, should we do five? Let's do five. Okay, hey, I'll take it. I'll take it. Not half bad whatsoever. Not half bad. Uh, med kit printer. Definitely don't need a med kit. Might save me, but I'd have to trade a legendary item for that. Uh, I don't know about that. All right, so we lost one goat hoof, uh, two opals. Honestly, dude, that's fine. That's fine. Two opals is still really good. Like I said, 100 armor per stack. So that's like a, a 60, maybe like 60, low 60s damage reduction. I want to say. Eh, probably like high 50s actually. I don't know. I can't do the, the math in my head. I don't remember the formula off the top of my dome anyway. All right. Last pillar. Can we get it done? That is a perfect. That's not a perfect. We're good. Never mind. All right, let's see the qu the quintuple ignition tank. That is insane. Look at that. I'm not even, okay. Let's only ignite this guy and see what happens. We got a poly loot proc as well. Look at that. Oh, burn feels so good now. I mean, you only need uh, to play artificer with a guaranteed burn and then uh, ignition tank. Five ignition tanks, but then it feels good. <laughs> no, it actually is really strong. Uh, unironically, jokes aside, that is pretty darn good actually. All right, we'll take that. I don't know. What, what should I title this video? Hmm. Because usually I like to have a theme to my uncut runs. I don't want to just post uncut gameplay. You know? I want to have a theme to it. Light Flux Pauldron, the most busted item in the game. How strong is Ignite? Ooh, maybe we can talk about that. Testing how strong is Ignite and other changes to the Risk of Rain 2 DLC. Something like that. That'd be a good uh, topic, actually. Talking about the DLC. Is the game harder? Actually, I'll probably do that. Because that, that, that is genu genuinely uh, one of the topics here that I've been focusing on is, has the game actually gotten harder, quote unquote? I don't know. I, I don't know why I'm telling you this. We're just waiting here for the last pillar to charge. Like I said, I was thinking about skipping uh, or cutting out the pillar section anyway, because it's pretty uneventful. All right, let's see if those words bite me in the butt about uh, not needing a Dio's best friend for the Mythrix fight. Hopefully, given that I've killed Mythrix uh, too many times to count, Hopefully, I don't need a Dio's best friend to pull it off with Artificer with uh, more than 50% cooldown reduction, icing, or freezing. But you never know. You never know. All right, get me in there. Let's see. And we got the Head Stomper. That was actually so good to get. The Head Stomper, why it's so good on Mythrix is you just need to stay above them. That's why Ion Surge makes Mythrix a literal free kill. You, he, he basically can't do anything. Uh, he really is only scared if you're playing on Eclipse and you, uh, you know, get strafed by his Needler shots. Then he can be a bit uh, scary. Other than that, though, he's going to run into that. Uh, what, he just said no? What? He straight up just said, ah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm just going to go right through here and not get frozen. All right, we're frozen right before the wall. He should walk into it. There it is. He should go into that. Oh, I might... That... Oh, I froze him. <laughs> I was about to say, that might have uh, killed me. All right, dude, you need to relax, Mythrix. Dude, we got some decent damage. Like, this is not bad. 
So ideally with your ice wall, what you want to do is if I had more movement speed, I'd be doing this. He's going to jump. Um, it's going to throw. Uh, ideally with ice wall, you want to put it perpendicular to Mithrix, not parallel. Um, so I would call that parallel. I don't know. But whatever. You want it to go like this and you want him to run through the wall like this. I don't have any movement speed. I'm trying to do that. Uh, that was a completely waste of an ice wall right there. So that way he will, uh, he'll be frozen by the initial wall and then he will run through the rest of it. So if I, if I go over here, see, look, now he's going to run through it once he gets unfrozen. Boom. Or he'll just dash again. All right. What is Mythrix doing? <laughs> what is he doing today, dude? Uh, also, I just can't put his dash back and now he's dead. Bye bye. Dude, that's some good damage. Like, honestly, what other survivor would be pumping this kind of Mythrix damage out with freaking two pairs of crit, double band? I mean, I do have double poly loot, so maybe quite a few. Kind of forgot about that. But this is, like, good. This is good damage, for sure. I don't think there's any reason to take the uh, the default primary on artifact. Or, sorry, the, the AoE. I didn't really think there was a reason before. I know some people like the, the extra AoE that it provides. You don't have to aim as much, but... Dude, there is, like, legit no reason to take the freaking AoE attack, losing out on that burn. Holy crap. Like, imagine if I had only the alien head, no light flux. I would still be pumping out so much damage. Because I would have, you know, more attack speed, so I'd be pumping the, the, the four hits out a little faster, getting that burn damage up. I don't need a ton of stacks of burn. I only need, like, four. Like, look at that. With five stacks of burn, that guy is getting melted. So just pumping out all four of my attacks real quick. Bah, 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 bah. That'd be nuts. I like this change to ignite. This feels very nice. Um, also, it's going to be curious, uh, or I'll be curious to see how much that affects the enemies, like grandparents and such, uh, because ignite was changed for them as well. It wasn't just players. So I don't know if uh, those are significantly scarier or what. I do not know. All right, can I hit a spear? I have missed legit all my spears and my walls on these guys, and I missed another one. Holy crap. All right, this one hits for sure. There we go. Kind of wanted to save that for my... Ooh, there's still another one. Perfect. I was going to say save it for my ice and fire ban. Let's see if he dies off of one burn. Pretty close. Pretty close. All right, here we go, Mythrix. Oh, nobody saw that. Don't worry. Nobody's going to watch this video. We're fine. We're fine. Look at that damage. I am so glad I did not scrap or lose my uh, my bleed. All right, I think I'm fine up here. I'm just going to kill this guy real quick. Let's get the head stomper here. I think I canceled it. Uh, I think so. You get a little bit of momentum when you first pop off at the head stomper. Uh, I think if you immediately Hopu Feather, you lose that. I might die here. Oh, that was close. Prega. Almost dead. Okay, dude. He ran through the ice wall again. Maybe it's the burn. Maybe because he's on fire, he's melting the ice wall. Think about that. Oh, he actually might be. Wait, he did it again. <laughs> Wait, that's not how that works. I know that's not how it works. Because <laughs> he's he's on fire, dude. He's just burning it. What do you mean? He melts the ice wall. It's that simple. Holy. Hey, look, I'm getting trolled by Mythrix right now. It's like the 10th time he's just gone through it. That's funny. That is funny. Dude, this is some good damage, though. Seriously. I will take that. Ignition tank. Feeling kind of... <laughs> on the artificer, dude. How many times have I said did? 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 That's going to miss entirely. All right, he's going to triangles here. If I hit him before he does triangles, I think he'll just forget about it. I think that's how it works miss my spear that's okay actually no what happens is once he starts triangles if you freeze him it'll cancel triangles and then he'll go right back into it i might kill him before he does that actually because i have no cooldowns whatsoever yeah so freeze him oh i'm trolling should go right back into it or not okay i'm actually kind of scared here need to kill him there he goes bye bye or not okay killed one of my drones that's fine he's a bully all right, let's get rid of the ramp real quick, and there should be uh Ooh, I might just want to burn him with flame. I'm gonna, I'm gonna risk this. Let's see if that Dio's best. Well, I wouldn't have had Dio's anyway here. Let's just see what happens. What's the worst that could happen, huh? Okay, or he just doesn't want to get frozen. That's cool. Please walk into it. Oh, I got my poly loot back. Sick. Actually, sick. I don't know if that glitched the balls out. I have died to Mythrix before, where his balls get glitched, it seems, and then just like they stay hidden almost it's kind of weird now nah, we got him we got 100 percent. that's what you do you got to full send it on mythrix full send it don't be scared of the final phase uh cool thing about the final phase actually if you damage him on the exact frame of his death um it will actually bypass the last phase entirely or, sorry that was not correct it will uh 
bypass his immunity in the final phase. I don't think this is a good portal. Eh, that's decent, actually. That's pretty good. Um, so, meaning, if you damage him on the exact frame, uh, he will not be invincible when he starts stealing your items. So you'll just have all your stuff, essentially, and then you just kill him before he even uh, sucks up like two or three items. You'll get caught by then. All right, we can't do the Void Link, even if I wanted to. I totally didn't, uh, didn't do that on purpose. Totally not. Um, but hey, hopefully you learned something for this uncut run. If you want to see more uncut runs like this, let me know. I'm not going to do it on a regular basis. I don't want to oversaturate my YouTube channel with just uncut gameplay. The easiest of content. But uh, again, I have been getting quite a few questions when the next uncut style video was coming out. So hopefully this helps some of you guys. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not much else to say here. I'll, I'll, I'll just keep recording until I actually leave, but... I don't think anyone's really struggling with the charge part. If you didn't know, actually, I will say this. Uh, the height, the vertical height of this charging area is infinite. Or it's, it's, the, it's the max skybox of the stage itself. So you can go as high as you want. You have a head stomper and a wax well. You just pop off there and you go, Wee! and you just float up there as artificer. Nothing's going to hit you. Nothing's going to hit you regardless. <laughs> you don't really need to use that uh, that tep, that tech. Sorry, not tip. I'm going to say tip or tech. Uh, but it is a thing. You can, you can go as high as you want, and it'll still be uh, charging up the, the rescue ship here. Also, uh, I don't know if some of you guys straight up didn't know. How do you get to the final boss, the, the ultimate final boss with the DLCs? You go through there, go to the, the spawn point, the, the teleporter that you come in on. There'll be a frog there, the Flaggy. Uh, you give him 10 Lunar Coins by petting him, and then he will take you to the final boss. He'll open up a, a Void Portal. You don't actually have to clear the stage like you do in a normal uh, Purple Portal. The Void Portal, Purple Portal, whatever. Uh, it'll get you straight to the final the alternate final boss so hopefully you guys enjoyed thank you guys for watching um more dlc content to come i still have my best loadouts video coming up and my survivor tier list video uh other than that it'll just be you know just whatever i think of making videos on so hopefully you guys enjoyed watching you can check out my stream at twitch.tv slash and also consider joining our discord server as well and we'll see you guys in the next video